15 minutes before the hour, Michael Patrick Shields heard all across the state of Michigan. The space shuttle is going to land at an unusual time. It'll happen while you sleep tonight, 2.30 in the morning. We'll have a replay of it tomorrow morning, of course. All the hard work is done, and NASA now focused on bringing home the crew of the shuttle Endeavor. Endeavor will land for the final time before it is sent to a museum. And uh, the success of the shuttle missions aboard Endeavor, according to NASA's Leroy Kane, is no accident. We've talked a lot about finishing strong, and, and we've been very determined as a team to do that. And uh, the last mission of Discovery, I think you saw that. I think you're seeing it play out here with Endeavor. The final flight of the shuttle program will be in July. It's a logistics mission, and uh, that will be that for the space shuttle program, part of our era of American history. Detroit's big three, the big three automakers, they eliminated tens of thousands of hourly jobs during the downturn. They are gearing up for a massive factory hiring. All three U.S.-based automakers have recalled a lot of laid-off workers, replenishing the ranks depleted during the recession, and uh, more are needed now. Companies are boosting production to satisfy the returning appetite for new cars and trucks, and that hiring is good news for Michigan, a turning point in an industry that's been hemorrhaging jobs for parts of the last decade. They're not going to be the uh, high-paying, handsomely benefited jobs that once set the bar for production wages, um, but uh, they will be jobs after all. The $28 uh, dollar an hour hourly wage that helped build the wealth in the middle class in Michigan is history. The jobs are now going to be about $14 an hour, and, uh, you know, nevertheless, there will be hiring if you're interested at the big three. Scott Danick from Trebilcock and Danick Financial is on the other end of our line right now this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Well, if uh, jobs are coming back and maybe we have this new normal with the economy, people might be more conscious about investing and saving and where they invest and with whom they invest and how they invest because that was a serious wake-up call we had over the last few years, wasn't it? Well, it's been a series of wake-up calls over the last 10, really, because if you remember back when the dot-com bubble burst, that was a significant uh, market event for people's portfolios. And then we had the uh, financial crisis just a couple years ago. So I think people are still uh, feeling a little whipsawed from those two. There will be people who will be picking themselves up now by their bootstraps, getting a job, sort of remaking themselves. Maybe it's at a lower wage. Maybe they lost their house. They're starting from zero again. But uh, they, uh, you know, maybe they're afraid of the stock market even after what they heard about people who lost uh, their investments and that sort of thing. What would you say to them if they walked into your office today? Well, with that example, Michael Patrick, when you've got someone that's uh, basically starting over uh, like that, it's, a, it's reasonable to be concerned. But one of the things that they can do is start within – uh, uh, let's just assume for sake of your example that they've got a job with a company that has a 401k because so many do uh, it would make sense to start contributing the minute they can uh, meaning as soon as they're eligible and do so at least at the beginning to the point where they're uh, they're getting matched because sometimes we see people that you know when they're starting out they don't have a lot of uh, money in a rainy day fund or they're trying to pay down debt but they've got a company match and they don't even put in enough to get the company match. Mm -hmm. And a company match is basically free money that someone can get, and it's an immediate rate of return on the money that they put in. So that, that would be A number one, is to start, uh, start at least getting the company match, and then I tell people, tie the little string around their finger, and every six months just raise their percentage by a percent or two, because anyone can save a percent of salary, and that way they do it gradually over time, and then within five or six years, they're back to saving 10 to 15 percent of their pay, and they don't even really know how they got there. Mm. Yeah, gradual then, I guess it would be. And just uh, Well, yes, because if you say to someone right away, hey, you should start getting, you should save 20 percent of your gross, they're going to say, well, I'd like to eat too, please, so, <laughs> uh, you know, and pay their other bills, and that's, that's perfectly reasonable. But if they, uh, if they do it a little bit over time, and we've had plenty of people in our 401ks that we service that have done that, where they come back after five or six years and they say, hey, I did it. I, I gradually raised my percentage, and now I'm saving just a ton of money. And like I said, they, they know how they got there, but it doesn't feel like it because it's a lot easier to add 1% on top of 1% gradually over time than just dive in full uh, full bore. Is it tough to tell a young person at 25, 30, even 35, hey, put this money away, but you can't touch it until you're 65? 
Well, I actually, it, it's come in the last uh, almost 20 years that we've been doing this. It, it's sort of come full circle because now you've got a younger generation that I, I really think they get it. Mm. Uh, meaning they know that they need to save and they know that they need to accumulate. Uh, I think what's ironic is part of the conversation that's going on right now with uh, entitlement reform that's going to impact uh, first their parents is probably starting to get that to think, hey, you know what, if I don't take care of myself, I may not. Because it's been years uh, and people have been thinking about the solvency of Social Security, so that's no... uh, that's no surprise. So I think a couple of factors are really making this younger generation look at that more. Because usually when we get those younger folks coming in, they're not, uh, we don't have to tell them they need to save. They're saying, I want to save, but how do I do it and still afford the other things you know, that they need to work into their budget? You changing the name of your company? Yes, we are. From yes, Trabilcock and Danik Financial to? Equanimity Wealth Management. And uh, why? Well, I was going to give you a uh, real quick question. Do you know what the term equanimity means? I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> well, uh, you must not fish a lot because the folks that I uh, I deal with that have uh, an interest in fishing, they've yeah. known what that term uh, has meant for about 10 years now. I've been using it in that. And uh, equanimity means calm or composure, uh tranquility, serenity, and I came up with that, uh, like I said, about 10 years ago to name my fishing newsletter because that's how I feel when I fish. But then over the years, the feedback that we've gotten from clients in terms of, you know, we have had these last two major downturns, and we just thought that equanimity really, uh, putting it right there in the name, better communicates both to our existing clients and to our uh, prospective clients the commitment that we'll make to them. I love the peace of mind you'll provide. Thank you very much.